क्वेश्चन नंबर वन फ्रॉम पेपर 2019 एंड पेपर कोड 0625 ओब्लिक 21 चिल्ड्रन व्हिच क्वांटिटी कैन बी मेजर डायरेक्टली यूजिंग अ माइक्रोमीटर स्क्रू गॉल्स स्क्रू गॉल्स इज बेसिकली यूज्ड टू फाइंड व्हाट थिकनेस ऑफ अ पेपर डायमीटर ऑफ अ ऑब्जेक्ट सो डायमीटर ऑब्जेक्ट इज नॉट गिवन सो वी विल गो विद द थिकनेस ऑफ अ पेपर सो क्वेश्चन नंबर 1 आंसर इज सी यस question number 2 we will take more time on the tough question children easy question we will do faster a brass ball and a feather are released at the same time on earth the ball reaches the ground first ball reaches the ground first and on the moon they reach the ground at the same time which what is the best explanation for this no air resistance air resistance on the moon yeah there is no air resistance on the moon in the absence of air resistance both the feather and the ball they will come with the same rate or they will strike the ground at the same time so that is the answer for question number 2 children if you create a vacuum on the surface of earth that still you can find that the feather and uh, the object heavy object they will also fall with the same acceleration with the same rate and they will strike the ground at the same time so question number 2 answer is D. Question number third: A heavy metal ball ball falls vertically downward through air, passing through equally spaced levels J, K, L, and M. The time taken to fall from one level to the next are measured. Where is the speed of the ball greatest, and which time is shortest? So basically, in this question, children. at what level where the speed is maximum so time will be minimum okay so where the speed is maximum so to cross that level the time will be lesser as the speed is higher so you need to find out when the ball is dropped at a certain height the ball start accelerating its velocity start increasing as it's move downward its velocity keep increasing and increasing before it collide at that moment the velocity will be maximum so then you can find the answer from this my explanation so the velocity will be highest at the bottom and the bottom level so when the object is passing through level l and level m the velocity will be maximum and if the velocity is maximum there the speed is maximum children so the time taken to pass the level or to cross the level l and m will be minimum so what is the answer for this question now children d yes the last option delta D. Question number four. Think about this question, children. There are many way to do this question. On Earth, a spring stretches by five centimeter when a mass of three kilogram is suspended from one end. Gravitational field strength is there of the Moon, uh, which means uh, sorry, which mass on the Moon would stretch the spring by the same extension? Yes, you can take some time for question number four. Think about it. Yes, Yadish, please. Question number four, children. Sir, is it B? Eighteen kg. Eighteen kg. Yes, eighteen kg is answer. Uh, but the explanation is important, children. Whenever you are typing your answer, children, better you know for the marking. I have the marking screen. Uh, but the main thing is that you should type your solution. That your working is important, children. how did you get that 18 kg so now children that the one method which i am telling you uh, by the uh, by using the hooke's law uh, according to the hooke's law that the spring constant is given by force per unit length that is the extension i need to find out the uh, spring constant of this spring and uh, the force acting on earth 
on a mass of three kilograms that is three and the gravity on earth is 10 and the extension produced is five and then centimeter basically here uh, and uh, i can find uh, this is equal to six is the force constant that is the string constant six here newton per centimeter this is the spring constant of the spring but the same spring is taken to the moon same spring children so again i can take in the left hand side that six is the spring constant that is the value of k now the weight on the moon mass i don't know that we need to calculate gravity on the moon is one sixth of the gravity on the earth so 10 by 6 divided by the extension extension is same that is 5 so you do this calculation 5 to the 10 to the 6 and then m equal to 6 multiplied by 6 that is 18 kilogram 18 kilogram is the answer So D is the answer children for question number four. Next question number five. X, Y, and Z are three regularly shaped solid objects. Three dimensions and masses are shown in the diagram. Which object have the same density? Which object have the same density? Children? So here we need to do some calculation. Yes, please. Yes. X and Z. How fast you can do this question? Uh, you need to calculate the density of X first. Density of X is given by mass divided by volume. Volume by of this cuboid object, 10 phi's of 50 to the 100. So I'm getting this. For the density of Y, I will go with 2. I will taking a long method, using the long method. 6 for the 24, 3 the 72. How much will be after dividing? Someone please divide this value. And then T is dz is equal to 50 divided by volume will be 25 and 25 to the this. So I'm getting dx and dy are density are same. And this will be something are different. Yes, what you said? Uh, x and z sir. c see that x and z only next question children question number six an experiment is carried out to find out the spring constant of a spring that obvious hooks law a load is there from a spring and extension of the spring is measured which calculation is used to calculate the spring constant? Spring constant, children. I use the equation for the spring constant, the previous question. Spring constant is given by force divided, force per unit length. Force that is of weight divided by length that is extension. So where I can find weight and extension in option B. So please remember that the Hooke's law equation that weight, force, or load applied is direct proportional with the extensions. More the force you apply, the more is the extension there. Are you with me, 10th class children? Are you listening? Yes, sir. Abhishek Agrawal, are you here? Yes, sir. Yesterday you were asking, want to ask some questions. You can tell me whenever I reach to your questions. Uh, yeah. Okay. So now we are question number seven. A car is drive, driven from rest on a long straight road. The car engine exerts a constant a driving force. The diagram shows the horizontal forces acting on the car. The resistive forces are proportional to the speed. Resistive forces, speed is increasing more the resistance force. Speed is increasing more the resistive force. Now, why does the car eventually reach a maximum speed? Look at the four options. Why does the car reach eventually a maximum speed? Uh, the resistive forces increase to make the acceleration zero. Resistive 
resistive force increased to make the acceleration of the car zero. Acceleration of the car zero means as the object in the statement they said the car achieve a maximum speed. If the car achieve a maximum speed, so at that time maximum speed means a constant speed. And if the speed is constant, then what about the acceleration? Acceleration will be zero. So acceleration is given by change in velocity upon time taken. There is not change. Maximum velocity means acceleration is zero. So we will go with this option that the resistive force increases to make acceleration to be zero. Then this will happen as per the statement of question number seven. So seventh question answer is D, delta. Question number eight is also important, children, that I want to discuss with all of you. This is the first question was to find the uh, unknown mass in the previous question. And now the question number eight is another uh, difficult question. You try, everybody try this question number eight and find, read carefully and find answer of this question number eight. Let me explain question number eight, children. How it is B. Let's find out that the why the answer is B. Uh, first, children, if you have uh, read this statement carefully, then you will find uh, there is a force two newton in the upward direction, one force acting six newton in the downward direction. I need to fix a string somewhere on this beam, and uh, in such a way that this beam again remains in a balance. So the first thing, as the total downward force is 6 Newton, to make the beam balanced, upward force should be, means upward and downward force should be equal. So if one force is 2 Newton in the upward direction, so other string, wherever I fix it, that string also make or exert a force of 4 Newton. Suppose uh, there is a string anywhere, Anywhere, I don't know where I have to keep it. Suppose this is the string which is placed at a distance of x meter, x meter, not x meter, sorry, x centimeter, all the units are in centimeter from the pivot point. This is the pivot point. Pivot. And the upward force should be 4 Newton here. This will be 4 Newton. So 4 Newton plus 2 Newton equal to 6 Newton. So remember, to make the beam balanced, all the forces in one direction should be equal to the, all the forces forces in another direction. So if I can assume that the other upward force is x, which is unknown, x plus 2 is should be equal to 6 Newton, that x is equal to 6 minus 2, that is equal to 4 Newton. What is this actually? This x about the force I'm talking about. So the, the upward force in the string Q will be 4 Newton to make it balanced. Now, we have the first part of this question. We also need to calculate that distance. What this distance should be so that the beam is a balanced condition. Where should I place this uh, string Q that again the beam is in balanced condition? That the Diagram is there. I have supposed that the distance is, don't be get confused, this x I calculated here for the force. Maybe you can take this. Okay, so this is force <coughs> for Newton in a string Q. Now here to find the position of a string Q, you need to be apply carefully movement principle principle of moment and what is that this 4 newton is the force acting at a distance of x centimeter from the pivot point and it will make the string to rotate in what direction children in anti clockwise direction look at the force 4 newton where it is acting at a distance of x centimeter and it will make the string to rotate in the anti clockwise direction what about the 2 Newton force? 
this two newton force making the beam to rotate in clockwise or anti clockwise direction till then two newton force is acting at a distance of 30 cm it will make the string to rotate about the pivot point this is acting upward in such a way it will rotate the string in the anti clockwise direction so two anti clockwise forces i have calculated what about the third one third force 6 newton which is acting at a distance of 20 cm this will make a create a couple or a torque or a moment of force which will make the coil or the beam sorry to rotate in what direction it will pull down the beam and about the pivot point it will pull down the beam it is acting here in the downward so it will pull down the beam and it will try to uh, rotate or tilt in the clockwise direction now you can apply principle of moment principle of moment total anti clockwise moment anti clockwise moment should be clockwise now you can find the total anti clockwise moment four into the distance of four newton force from the pivot is unknown plus another anti clockwise moment is force multiplied by its distance from the pivot this is 30 centimeters given is equal to the total clockwise moment 6 newton multiplied by its distance 20 so 4x is equal to after doing the calculation you will get this 60 and x equal to 6 divided by 4 and 15 so x equal to 15 centimeter so that the string q should be placed at a distance of 15 centimeter from the left hand side or from the pivot point. So the option will be B option is the right answer. <coughs> I explained, and if you know some other method, children, you can apply, but that answer should be B. Any confusion in this question, children? Calista, Natalia, Ethan. Better you note down this working, children, so that. I'll Later on, you can practice and can find out that the working. Now, next question, children. Question number nine. How is momentum calculated in terms of mass and velocity? and uh, what type of quantity is this momentum is given by children product of mass and velocity and momentum is a vector quantity as velocity is a vector quantity a scalar there is a uh, there is a tool a scalar quantity multiplied by a vector always give result a vector quantity always give a vector quantity so scalar means mass is a scalar quantity multiplied by velocity which is a vector quantity so their resultant will also vector quantity it means the momentum will be a vector quantity so here that answer is b question number 10 an object is in free fall the change in gravitational potential energy of the body depends on its mass change in height and the gravitational field strength what is the correct expression for the gravitational potential energy? Everybody knows that uh, gravitational potential energy is given by mgh. So yeah, mgh that the delta h is given in the difference in height. So gm delta h. Option A. This one. Next question. Number eleven. Our machine is more efficient since what? Uh, let's see. It wastes very no, little. A energy. machine is very efficient means it wastes a uh, very little energy. Okay, that is the answer. Of it wastes a very little amount of energy. It will do a lot of useful work then, and the wastage of energy is minimum and minimum. So that you just try to remember it. Question number twelve. A box is pulled along a floor by a force of 3 Newton. Friction is there. And uh, how much kinetic energy 
does the box gain in moving two meter? Distance is given to this question. Object should be moved two meter distance. Three Newton force in the forward direction, one Newton force is there, whatever this initial position. And uh, after this force of the resultant force of two Newton, finally object, the same object will reach to the uh, another point that is a two meter of uh, displacement or a distance, two meter. Now the question is how much kinetic energy does the box gain? Object is moving, it will gain some kinetic energy. Kinetic energy will change initially it was at rest when finally it reached to the, some other position. There is a gain in kinetic energy. How much is that kinetic energy? So there is one equation children, if you don't know, remember work done is always equal to the change in kinetic energy. Work done is always equal to the change in kinetic energy. How much work is done on the box to move it at a distance of two meter? I need to do some work done. I need to apply a force. And due to that force, the object will perform, uh, uh, move a certain distance. So work done is given by the equation. What is the equation for work done children? Force multiplied by the distance. That is the equation for uh, work done. And in the right hand side, I will write uh, the kinetic energy. Force value, how much is the force? Force acting on the box that we are talking about the resultant force. So this resultant force is three Newton minus one Newton. Three Newton minus one Newton, that is two. And how much is the distance traveled by the object by this force of two Newton? That is a two meter. That is the delta. So two to the four, four Joule is the change in kinetic energy of the object or the gain in kinetic energy. Any doubt in question number 12, children? You have to remember, children, in exams that the basic thing is you should remember the steps, how to do this question. Equations. It's not about the memorizing the answers. You have to understand concept, what equations we have to apply. You have to memorize equation, remember formulas. Here, the resultant force is three Newton minus one Newton. This is two Newton. It's not about three. It's not about one. It's their difference that the resultant force acting on the box. Next question, children. One third, one three, sorry. The diagram shows a stone suspended on a string under the surface of a liquid. The stone experience, experiences a pressure caused by the liquid. What would increase the pressure on the stone? What would, children? Very simple question. What would increase the pressure? Powering the stone deeper into the lake. Yes. Other children only are today. Yes, is only. You also, please, children, keep sending your answers. Uh, by moving the stone in the downward directions, mean lowering the stone deeper into the liquid. How would I say that by lowering the stone into the into the liquid? Because I have an equation: pressure exerted in liquid is given by the equation H, density, and G. Density that the liquid is same, gravity is same here, so only the factor that is H. Pressure increases as we move downward in a water. So as the height means that is the depth increases, more and more pressure will increase on this stone. Question number 14, water in a beaker, Water in a beaker, okay, Callister. Uh, water in a beaker evaporates when it is left on a bench of, for a period of time, increasing the surface area and increasing the temperature of water, change the rate of evaporation. Which law is correct? Look at all the increasing the surface area. You know that uh, more and more water molecules will they come out and uh, they will. they will work evaporation rate will be faster and second we know that if the temperature there is a difference in temperature and by increase in more temperature the evaporation becomes faster so where the both the answers are there rate of evaporation increases in option d and rate of evaporation increases as the temperature increases yes and uh, here chiron said 14th d ethan said d Alistair also answers the correct. Question number 15, children. 
read this question also carefully not difficult but understand this statement night storage heater contains a large block of a material that is heated electrically during the night okay during the day the block cools down releasing energy whatever the uh, this heater has absorbed absorbed energy during the night in the morning it is releasing energy and then temperature is decreasing which thermal capacity and which night time temperature increases will cause the most energy to be stored by the block uh, large thermal capacity is large night time temperature thermal capacity of the block should be highest larger and uh, and if it is larger then what will happen heat capacity of the block is highest it may absorb more and more heat and if it is absorb more and more heat then the temperature will certainly increase and so that night time when it is absorbing the heat our temperature will be large and the thermal capacity of the block will is also large so question number 15 that there's no much explanation for this uh, is the right answer question number 16 there is this is another important and difficult question to in this paper i think i will say that the third question that is difficult here in this first 16 question uh, please read this statement carefully take some time So for question, question number 16 children, uh, that uh, I just want to draw a diagram, even though that the diagram is not required, but just uh, we have a beaker, suppose a water there, and the mass of water is 100 gram, 100 gram, and initial temperature of water is 25 degrees Celsius, it is poured into an insulating cup, uh, 50 gram of ice, so suppose uh, you have put 50 gram of ice also in it and ice initial temperature is zero degrees celsius so the water is stirred until the temperature of the water has fallen to zero degrees celsius now children listen carefully water is mixed with ice temperature of water is falling temperature of water initial temperature of water was 25 then it finally reached to the temperature of the water has fallen to zero degrees celsius so in this question i can say that uh, water is losing heat because temperature is decreasing and the ice is gaining absorbing heat that the heat lost by water is absorbed by the by what by the ice so i can write here one very popular equation here this question uh, amount of heat lose by water is gained by ice and that is equal to zero since one object is losing other one is gaining so there's sum of heat lost and gain that is equal to zero with the help of this question i can do this question so amount of heat lost by water we have an equation q is equal to mc delta t mass of water 100 specific heat capacity of water is given 4.2 joule per gram degree celsius into difference in temperature that that is which is final temperature minus initial temperature final temperature attained by the water is zero minus initial temperature was that is 25 thus in case of ice ice you know some part of the ice melt what phase change is taking place phase change of ice so the temperature won't change it remains ice will remains at zero degree so i will use here the equation q is equal to m into l the amount of heat absorbed by ice is mass multiplied by l what is this l that is the latent heat of fusion this is equal to zero now children you need to do some calculation here uh, okay now one thing here that is very important that what this m here amount of mass of ice that melted 18 gram of ice remains unmelted what is the what do you mean by this part 
how much it melts? Third, 50 minus, yeah, 50, you, you need to write 50 minus 18, that is equal to 32. So this is very important, you have to write 32. So 32 into L uh, equal to zero. So please do this calculation, multiply 100, 42, and 25, and equate this equation. And this L, F, latent heat of uh, fusion of, uh, in this case will be, um, when you do calculation, so this will be something around 328 uh, joule per tank. And so 328 nearby can go with the option C. So please note down this question too. Sir, what is the 0 0.254? 0 point? 0 0.25. This is not 0 0.25, this is 0 minus 25. Oh, okay, sir. This equation, let me write it. This equation is Q equal to NC delta T. Mass of water, specific heat capacity of water is given. Delta T is the final temperature minus initial temperature. Then is 0 minus 25. Delta T. Sir, could you re-explain um energy of W plus energy of I equals to zero. Yeah, this, this equation, Ethan, you know, QW plus QI, what do you mean by this equation? Here, in case of a one object, water is immersed in a ice, ice immersed in a water. In that situation, so what happens? One object is losing heat, and another object gaining heat. As the system is isolated, no part of the heat is going to the surrounding, one object losing, other object is gaining. So that's why the total amount of heat in the system is equal to zero. The total change that is equal to zero. QW plus QI, I kept equal to zero. Even you can also write that QW equal to When you add it, QW plus QI, that is equal to zero. Because one object, the amount of heat lost by the object is gained by the other object. So one is losing the one who is losing that negative and who is gaining that we take it positive value. So that's we have this equation and then you need to put the value of QW, you need to put the value of QI. In case of what, amount of heat lost by water, what is the equation? MC delta T. Okay. And uh, ice is absorbing. Phase change is taking place because it is melting, the temperature won't change. The melting process, you know, the temperature will remain the same. So QI is equal to M into latent heat of fusion. That is the value. So you need to put this value. Oh, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, what, is, uh, what is LF? Is it just ML? 